right behind us, right on the side of us. You can, you can kind of see the thing moving through the woods. Uh, all I can remember is flipping the light on, and I see this creature, and I knew, I knew in my heart, I knew in my mind, in the whole night, this isn't a man. And then this thing walks across the road, takes a turn towards us, and then leaps over a guardrail. Went to look forward, and there was a thing, is all I can call it. Squatch DTV, exploring the Bigfoot mystery each week with your hosts, veteran researcher, author, and TV personality, the Squatch Detective, Steve Culls, and from the Bigfoot Research Project of Kentucky, Chris Bennett. Sit back and buckle up as we bring you guests from around North America discussing the Bigfoot phenomena, but not without a few laughs, too. Here are your hosts, Steve and Chris. And good evening, cyberspace. Welcome to Squatch DTV for today's date, August 16th, 2020. I'm your host, your guy, the Squatch Detective Steve Calls, along with right down there, my co-host, Mr. Chris. I work my ass off every day, Bennett. How you doing, Steve? <laughs> I am wonderful, Chris. And uh, for those who don't know, we got Ryan Cavalline way down. Uh, Chris, Ryan, you, yeah, hey, right Ryan. Down there. Hey, and, Ryan. Uh, we got one hell of a show on for you tonight. Let's do the roll call, Chris, because we've been out for a month. Oh, uh, yeah. One week because of technical glitch. Another week because we were just beat. <laughs> another week because I took, well, last week I took sick. <clears throat> just before the show, when we were all ready to go, and also I, I just really wasn't feeling good. So, so uh, let's say hi to the folks. We got John Swan. Good evening, hey, John. John. Dave, Dave, good to see you back. Hey, B, what's up, B? Hi, B. Am and Chris, what's going on? Come on, mm -hmm. Aaron. Aaron is back. Hello, thank Aaron. you, sir. And uh, who else we got coming on here? Uh, we got oh. Charlie Wonton. Hey, Charlie, <laughs> I know what that guy is. Um, <laughs> Ryan, you know Charlie. <laughs> hey, Pat. Uh, yes, Pat, you're Pat. on the right stream. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here to talk about woo. Talk about woo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's the right stream or not. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, good to see you, Terry. Terry. Hello. Hey, Tack. I hope you're feeling better, my brother. Uh, hey, no, so, Jimmy Trick. Well, hmm. Interesting how we always see Charlie Wonton on one screen. And I Jimmy know. Trick on the it's other. like... I Superman and Clark Kent, you know. Yeah, kind of, yeah, kind of like Diana, you know, Diana Summers and uh, Wonder Woman. I don't know. Carrie, Carrie. welcome, Carrie. <laughs> Joe, how's it going? Joe. Diane, Diane, good to see you. Hey, Diane, Buck. Wow. Uh oh, here's trouble. Dave Rupert in the house. Buck. Uh oh, hey Dave. <laughs> well, riders in. So we got a, quite the crew coming in, and we just started. <laughs> Golly, welcome, welcome, folks. Good to see y'all. So, um, you know, uh, and uh, you know, I'm up. Oh, 
Amy just popped in. Hello, Amy. Hi, Amy. <clears throat> so anyway, um, you know what? It, it, you know, it was also a very tough month last month. Um, and, and Ryan, you you can feel it. you you know you know it was mm. what a crappy month it was last month. We lost who did we lose? We lost uh, a Pennsylvania uh, researcher, uh, um, young young lady uh, due to cancer. Uh, you know, and that that affected a lot of my friends. But uh, somebody I personally knew, and uh, Ryan knew as well, was uh, Dave Dragason. And uh, yeah, Dave. But uh, the movie we're going to talk about tonight, not only was it, you know, uh, uh, you know, and John Tomical's uh, last film as well, an only yeah. film that I think about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, this would have made John's day, I think, getting on a film like this. Um, but yeah, the, the loss uh, this year has been, but Dave came as a complete shock. Yeah. And uh, really, oh, it, was, it was tough. So. But uh, they said, don't be in my films anymore. It seems like people pass away. <laughs> ah, geez. Wait a minute. I was in your film. Cursed, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, Steve. <laughs> now okay. I, I got to stare at the cutout now. It's going to come at me. <laughs> um, but yes. Um, oh, yeah. And uh, Tommy. Uh, where, where is that? Hang on a second. Um. And uh, Tom, another, you see, not only was it, yeah, we, we lost uh, uh, Danielle Elclair from Pennsylvania. She was a, a big, uh, popular Pennsylvania researcher. I don't know if yeah. you knew her, Ryan. I, I've never met her, no. Yeah. And uh, we, we also lost another good friend of mine, Tom Doherty, uh, who is a Nezra researcher. Uh, he lost, like, first I get Dave's death, um, and then, like, Five days later, I get Tom's death, and I've been out in the field a, a few times with both of them. And Tom, I've known for oh, I want to say six, seven years, uh, being on on the Nezra team. So again, way, way too young, uh, way too young. So uh, just uh, yeah, it, it was it's it was been a, a tough year. Yeah, it, it's, it's been, been very tough. Been, been horrible, um, you know. And let's not forget. We also lost Wilfred Brimley. Yeah, that's a man. <laughs> you say potato, mm. um, I say diabetes. <laughs> but, yeah. but uh, you know, so. No, oh, he was a good man. He made some good movies. You know, he did well. One of the one of the ones he was a scoundrel in was The Firm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, he wasn't exactly a, a very nice character in that one. But, you know, he did some more that, uh, what was it, uh, Cocoon? You know, that was a really Cocoon. good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Quaker Oats. Oop, hang on, I'm trying to. There Quaker Oats. Quaker <laughs> Oats. And, uh, you know, but on, on the positive side, mm. uh, on, on the positive side, Ford is coming out with the new Ford Bronco. All right. Yes, the new Ford Broncos. You can order school. one. You might get one late next year. <laughs> That's right. You know, uh, reaction to it lately has been great. Uh, I mean, obviously. He's <laughs> <laughs> uh, got one already picked out, right? <laughs> oh, OJ is asking, do they, ha do they come in white? That's right. <laughs> Blood stained. <laughs> and, 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 and just so that everybody knows, they come standard with AC. <laughs> good, good. All right, that was a pretty good joke. <laughs> Off yeah. the top of the head, too. I wonder if the if the steering wheel is going to have hand warmers. That way, you don't have to have gloves. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it comes standard with a sock dryer, too. <laughs> oh man! Uh, <laughs> you know, people would buy that if they came out with the OJ Simpson <laughs> line. Special will AC, edition. Will AC deliver it? <laughs> and what what was the uh there they had a special uh, was it the Eddie Bauer Bronco or something like that? Um they should come out with a special edition Bronco, the O. J. Simpson Bronco. O. J. <laughs> Simpson special Absolutely. edition. It's right. It, it's got its own compartment for a wig, <laughs> a bag for it with fifty thousand dollars and a handgun. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little Fits it all perfectly in there, and it That's, also come. It also comes with a pen and a a tablet, so you can write out your confession. Yeah, 
And we were talking about this the other day, Steve. I mean, <laughs> John Bush I mean, says, <laughs> John Bush says the top speed on the white one is 35 miles per hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, John. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. Everybody, you can remember. And if you think about it, where were you when the, when the OJ Simpson Bronco chase was going on? Can you remember? And I can think back and I know exactly where I was at when it was happening. Cause we were all listening to it on the radio, laughing our butts yeah. off. Well, you know, I heard when they deliver it, it actually gets a police escort. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, they're all behind it, not in front of it. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. Stop, stop, <laughs> stop. You're killing me. <laughs> oh. oh, goodness gracious. Well, you know, like I said, we can always have some fun on this show. And uh, <laughs> I saw that it was a perfect opportunity. Um. Just a quick programming note. Uh, in two weeks, on on August 30th, we're going to have Dr. Haskell V. Hart on. Of course, Dr. Haskell is the one who wrote the Sasquatch Genome Project, a failed DNA study with a forward by Dr. Jeff Meldrum. So he'll be on uh, on August 30th. We've confirmed him. So uh, still waiting on... Uh, Still waiting on confirmation of next week's guest, but we we've got a lot of things rolling. So uh, so that's going to be awesome. So anyway, let's talk about this uh, film, uh, uh, Mountain Devil Two, uh, the search for Jen Clement, and of course, people know that this is a very near and near and dear topic to me. Um, and uh, it, it is out on Amazon Prime if you want to rent it. Uh, I recommend go out and just buy one. And uh, you know, Me great too. Little, <laughs> great, great DVD, freshly done. I mean, you can't ask for anything more. Can't ask for Very anything cool. more. Great, great little. Now, I, I, I happen to preview that film. And it's got a, a lot of great, great people in it. And one, uh, one, sh and one schmuck that's on a Skype interview. But <laughs> Anyone in particular, Steve? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Well, the great no, there's only one schmuck on it, and that's the guy on the Skype. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> that's why I was fixing to ask you, Steve. Is there anybody that you would exclude in that description? <laughs> myself, <laughs> I'll exclude myself. <laughs> I'm a humble man, and oh. I, I, I have to say, you know, it was it was great to hear. It, it, it brought a tear to my eye seeing Dave Dragson on it. Yeah. You know, you yeah. see that, and it's like, oh, I was so know. saddened that. It was so close to being released, and he was so looking forward to seeing it. And I, I had sent out uh, a message to a few of them saying, "Hey, I'll see you uh, at uh, a conference, uh, Fred Saluga's, just a couple of weeks ago." And I said, "I'll get you your copies then, so I can save on postage because I'm cheap like that." And uh, yeah. usually, Dave's the first one to ever get back to me on Messenger, and he didn't. Then uh, the next day, I found out he passed away, which is uh, oh, it was heartbreaking. Man. Well, the nice thing though is <coughs> in the documentary. Dave has been immortalized because every time somebody puts in the DVD, there he is, you know? Okay. And yeah. uh, I was thinking about stuff like that the other day. For some reason, I was sitting around watching an episode of the Three Stooges, which, you know, I love the Stooges. And uh, it, hit, it hit me, you know, everybody that they were showing, they had like shown a crowd of people, everybody they're showing in this is dead. Mm. But mm. there they are, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, the older you get, the more, the, unfortunately, the more um, um, inevitable. That's right. That there's going to be people around you that are going to leave us uh, some sooner right. than they should. And Dave was one of them. Yeah. So it but, just it just came from left field so quick. You know, he wasn't, it did. It did. You know, it wasn't like, it, it, yeah. you know, he was having health problems or something. You know, it was just like poof yeah. out of the blue. Now, you know, John Tomical, you know, that that was kind of a shock, but he was 91. What's really scary was I actually talked to him three days prior to him passing away because I, oh. I keep up with him through emails. I'd send him the artwork, say, hey, here's what's going on. And he was just so tickled about everything, and he was so energetic about the film, and he couldn't wait for it. And then uh, it was about three days after an email I had from him. His, his daughter, April, had uh, messaged me and said, hey, I just want you to know that dad passed away. Oh. And uh, I, I believe he was having some heart problems. And he was 91 at, when we filmed, so he had just turned 92. And uh, I, I said it was just a couple of months before the film would have been done. I just It was heartbreaking that he didn't get yeah. to see it. But, I mean, yeah. April and his family just got to see it, and they were 
so joyful and happy. He's like yeah. dedicating the film to him. And right. they said that dad would have been very happy. And that was my main goal. You know, you don't want to let the family down who were related to the book. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, you know, if you left all the doors open and I, I kind of like that. And that, that was kind of the neat thing about that film. Uh, you didn't take a, a stance on a side mm -hmm. and you kind of let the chips fall where they were. Right. And I thought that was kind of cool. And it's got a really interesting ending and I'll, I'm going to not talk about the ending, but I just want to say, say to folks, the well, last 10 Tyler. minutes of the film, I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so not, not uh, that, for those who are, are, are very in, in, into this story, the creature, um, you, you know, the ending is just, uh, it really <laughs> sends you for a little bit for a loop. So, which is cool. And uh, I, I thought that was, when I saw that, I was like, Ryan, you did it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. you that, was, yeah, I, I really, that was so I, tough to pull off thinking, how are you going to do this? But, uh, yeah. you know, and, and like I say, maybe a year down the road, six months down the road after the movie circulated a bit, I'd love to have you come back on and we can talk about the behind the, you know, the, the, the yeah. true feelings and stuff that you can give away, yeah. you know, after the movie's been out for a while, but right now it's just too soon to do that. So, you know, uh, I, I yeah. try to stay as close to the book, like that whole yep. trying to get the, well, with anything we try to do is always like, you want to grab your audience and give that emotional twist or turn yep. or make it worth yeah. your while. And I'm probably a poor documentary filmmaker because of that, because I try to find the emotion, like a, uh, like a fictional movie would other than just here's your facts yeah. we're done with the movie <laughs> yeah. i'd rather ha have a little a little bit of a, a gut turner in there or some sort well you gotta know? have you gotta have the draw you gotta right. have something to keep people in their seat mm -hmm. and uh just so people know ray is a palpatine damn it i don't <laughs> want to ruin the end of that movie too but i just uh, see i ruined a movie tonight so i don't have to ruin this one <laughs> well i haven't i haven't Save watched me nine yet. hours <laughs> I haven't watched it yet, but I'm going to be in the same uh, boat as, as Edward is over in the chat room. He says, I bought one and I rented it as well. Edward, I'm going to do the same thing because after the show tonight, I'm going to rent it on Amazon, but I'm going to go ahead and order it because <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to I wanna go ahead and watch it before the DVD gets here. But, you know, it, it's so funny because, you know, everybody in the film looks the same. Uh, yeah. They haven't changed in all these years. Like even drag, man, you saw drag. That's drag. I knew, five, you know, from years yeah. ago. That's Dave Rupert. You know, I, I, you know that the beard is the beard. Except that's that right. Time, except that one time he did shave that. That was nobody knew it. Recognized him. <laughs> it looked like a young man. Oh. <laughs> I'm back to gray again, too, Steve. My just for men wore off. I thought that was supposed to be permanent or something. You 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 don't need just for men. You need just for Sasquatch. <laughs> oh man for the grading sasquatch uh anyway. so let's 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 dip into this let's so what what decided you to make this film well i gotta rewind time and i'll make it a short story <laughs> oh it, it's a two-hour show we got all the time in the world well yeah come on lay it on us man well, here's the long version then all right <laughs> Originally, when I did the first Mountain Devil movie, that was back in like 2009, 2010, <laughs> we're, we're about to start shooting it. And I had shot some of it, but really didn't really have a direction with it because at the time I was just going around with a lot of the Bigfoot groups and just kind of filming what they were doing. It was kind of like a Bigfoot 101. Here's just what they do. They go out and blah, blah, blah. And at the time I had, had to book the creature and I thought, you know, this is the best story I've ever read. It's just great. It's just wonderful. Of course, I couldn't find who to talk to about it. So Finally, I found you address online, the Allegheny Press, so I wrote, wrote him a letter. There was no phone number, and time went on, and they sent me a letter back and said, uh, blah, 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 and we could never connect with a green to do the book, so I kind of left it go at that point, and at the time, Dave Rupert and I had come across this case in Phillipsburg, so I said, let's just run with that. It's a great story as well, and that's what Mountain Devil 1 became, but that was 10 years ago. Fast forward to late last early last year i was cleaning out some files and the book fell out of the out of one of the binders and i'm like this is such a great story why hasn't this been told why hasn't anyone looked into it so i started my research again found steve's information about what you looked into and i said you know i'm going to crack this one more time so yeah. i again 
wrote them a letter and uh his daughter got back to me and she's like let me talk to dad at this point dad's 91 and then a couple of weeks went by and i thought well yeah we tried it's not happening let's move on to something else and then she finally got back to me and said yeah dad would like to talk to you about it so that kind of opened the doors and i said well listen this is how i want to do it i'm not taking your book and making a motion complete motion picture about it I, i'm making a documentary about who the writer was but i want to take elements from the book is that okay and after him hawing around we finally agreed on everything got the paperwork signed i said uh finally we're gonna get to do the book i wanted to do 10 years ago and everyone was on board this time and it felt really positive to do and i thought it, it, it's sad that this story has not been told yet really so mm -hmm. that was the best opportunity to do a bigfoot movie that i feel that needed to be done and there's so many bigfoot movies out there and so many bigfoot documentaries that have been beaten to death and people going from town to town to town every bigfoot story but this is the only bigfoot story i've read that has such heart in it and such like a passionate mm -hmm. drama to it that it, it just it just wasn't the right timing 10 years ago fast forward now it, it was the right timing and i think mm -hmm. I think John just uh, thought it was time. Yeah. So yeah, that's my yeah. short version. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I got to ask, you know, because, you know, when I was doing my research for it, uh, you know, I was like, well, you know, John's like 91 and I didn't know how yeah. to reach out to him exactly. And I was him and Han. Then, you know, I heard you were on it. So I kind of backed up on it a little bit. So, well, you know, I'll let, let Ryan do his thing and I'll, I'll just turn mine into a, a, a presentation I do. And we, we did a whole uh, episode of Squatch TV special edition on it way back last year. I think it was September of last year. Um, so for me, uh, you know, I, I got to ask, how intimidating was it to go see John Tomical? I was nervous as hell, man. <laughs> I'm like, I was like nervous, but I kept talking to his daughter and she's like, oh, he's all excited. He can't wait and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, but I'm going to really screw this up and he's going to hate it and he's going to be mad at me. But uh, after meeting him, it was like, the, it was just like that, uh, un that favorite uncle you always have. And you could sit there and bullshit with him for uh, forever about you know, stories and especially Bigfoot. He, he just loved it. It was, um, and after that, we were just buddies, mostly by email, because he was old school, we, you know, emails. <laughs> and so, um, but uh, it, it was it was well worth it, and I'd, I'd do it again. You know, you know that is so weird to hear old school being emailed. old school emails. I know. I'm like, he didn't text. He didn't call. <laughs> it was it was just email. <laughs> Good God! Remember the day you had to write letters? I know. Yeah. But if you think about that, was the only way I ever got him was by writing a letter to him. Yeah, uh, that was the first yeah. step, and he wrote back. And uh, um, it's just too bad we couldn't have done it earlier. That's all. Yeah. Well, but like, I, but yeah. like I said earlier, with you, I mean, I, I enjoyed the film we did. I really do. It's a great film. Documentary. Uh, we probably lost a few steps here and there, but. The research you did on it was is mind blowing and much more detailed, and I think if people really want to look into it, they should see that episode you did about the book. It was that's that's very detective work more than what we did. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that happens, and you know it's it's funny because uh, a good friend of mine and one of my lifelong friends, we were talking about TV and you know TV programming how it's evolved in the last five or ten years. And it's not evolving for the good, no. <laughs> you know. I I mean, I watch your stuff in 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 in. in you know, you say you you think you struck out. At, at, you know, being more towards a documentary or or being fact finding. I I think you brought out more fact than most TV shows do in three seasons or four seasons. Well, it felt like we kept running and ending up with more questions than answers we just kept <laughs> but that's okay <laughs> you know you see that's the problem with uh, reality tv today is they they just want to keep stringing the questions along and leaning it towards this is spooky this really <laughs> happened and then you know I, I i turn on the tv and you know one of the shows that <laughs> <laughs> and every once in a while, I'll see a show. Oh, hmm, that looks interesting. I'm going to watch that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> One of them was, uh, you know, uh, Paranormal Crowd on Tape. 
And Great yeah, every, every once in a while you see something good, but then all of a sudden, oh, yes, we have this submission by this guy in Pennsylvania by the name of Jeff Patterson. Mm. Oh. <laughs> you know, and then there's their panel of experts saying, oh, well, you know, where they, oh, my God, where do they find these folks? <laughs> Um, They're out but, there. You know, yeah. Well, you know what? I I don't think, and truthfully, I I think the way they spin that is is that they tell their talent, you know, we really don't want to knock this down. They they, if anybody watches a TV series nowadays, uh, at least on the Bigfoot side, and they are looking for truth, they're not going to find it. Right. Yeah. They're, and what I want to know is where can they where do they find these experts? Uh, to comment on videos that we've already, I mean, it, if we didn't do it, somebody else busted it as a hoax, and we well, exposed well, yeah. it, you know, and it, it's a hoax video that has been proven to be a hoax, and they have experts commenting on it like it was real. And you know, that, that it, at, least when, at least when Finding Bigfoot did did uh, the 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 tree shaker video from Patterson, at least they turned around and said, "Well, we really don't think it's real." You know, yeah. that, 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 that's fine. I mean, at least, mm. uh, you know, every time I watched an episode of that, the, there was evidence. I thought that's, that's pretty good there. And they'd be like, nah, it's not one. But they over here with this, uh, something that was just off the wall. They're like, that could have been one. <laughs> yeah. <I> just, <laughs> because you have a producer standing there saying, we'll say this, say that, yeah. say that. And that's. Yeah. And then, you know, they edit, you know, the editors are snipping away and making things. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, I thought but, that was you know, real. One thing I did like about the Finding Bigfoot stuff, okay, when they would put stuff on there for entertainment value and stuff, uh, at least uh, Matt, uh, Matt Moneymaker, would, would go on the BFRO uh, forums and say, well, you know, hey, you know, guys, this is a picture of, a, this is a, a thermal of a horse that they put on there, and, yeah. you know, we told them not to, not, you know, it was a horse, but they wanted <laughs> for entertainment value, you know, yeah. they kind of embellished it a little bit. Well, but, uh, the the interest and like I say, that show Finding mm -hmm. Bigfoot came on before this turn. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and understand what we've seen, yeah. and and this is why Ryan, I say you're wrong about thinking you failed at that portion of the program, oh. because we see this turn that happens like in I want to say 2015 with the mermaid thing mm -hmm. and then the Megalodon thing and then the Dateloff past thing, which has been the bane of some existence because they created that last picture, you know, where they see this thing and the, they created that picture for the show and it's being passed off around the internet amongst researchers or at least newbie researchers saying it's real and it's mm -hmm. not. It was right. created for that TV series. You're saying the mermaids were fake? What? Yeah, what? Huh? <laughs> there, there, there's no 25 foot and, shark. <laughs> and the one, yeah, the one they did, uh, Bigfoot captured or something. Oh, that's yeah. watch captured. You know, I had, honest to God, I had family members calling me and saying, "Chris, turn it on this the Discovery or whatever channel they've caught Bigfoot." And I'm like, and, and, "No, and, and, no." And Pat, no. Pat Turner, Pat Turner over in the chat just made a great comment. They were going to quit the show over the, the that deer thermal. The and deer they thermal, yeah, yeah. They were they yeah. were po the way that got portrayed. Yeah. Um. So at least you know, but now you know, like I say. It depends on you know. Okay, we did our we did our season. We signed for one season. This is how it's going to change. And going forward, that's why it did a lot better than what we see. You know, sometimes now. You know what's really sad is they have a, a nice amount of production money that they can do something decent that is more truth driven right. than entertainment. Yeah. I'm making documentaries for you know pennies and nickels. Is yeah. you know that's whatever lunch money we have that week. That's what we're making the movie on. Yeah, and you know we're doing our best to try to, you know, find something truth out, and not not make it enter. It, there is entertainment, but we're still trying to find something truthful. Well, yeah. you know, you know, intermeshing the book, which I thought was was wonderful, was taking some of the major points of the book, <clears throat> and you were splitting it up, which I thought was that was ingenious. Because I saw, you know, it was kind of funny. I'm watching this whole thing, and I, I, you know, I, in the back of my mind, I knew what I had said on my interview. Mm -hmm. And then I see the first, you know, few minutes of it. I go, well, okay, pretty good, pretty good. That and was I go, it. I, I, yeah, that was it. Uh, I probably won't be back. And then I'm back. 
Uh, okay, I and I, I saw how you were doing the cuts. Like you, you weren't taking, you were breaking it apart into segments mm-hmm. where they were appropriate, and and you could see that you had a game plan going into all those interviews. And uh, I wanted I mean, a, ju- a journey. It was it yeah, was a journey and, for us. So, and I wanted to take the audience on our journey, and but yet I wanted to keep the the, the most important people still relevant throughout the whole thing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I I thought that was was great because, you know, you get some of the story and then you get you know some some discussion on it and then you get some of the story and, you know, uh, uh, to me it was a home run. Thank you. Thank run. you. Hey, look who stopped in, Tom Steenberg, our good friend, Tom, uh, and uh, also, Eman, welcome, Eman, five one two Texas, and uh, Mr. Allen is in in the house too. So hi guys, Allen, welcome aboard. Yeah, and and that what I like about it is is that that there's no there's no glossing of it, you know, and and the the ending, like I say, I I cannot stress how interesting the ending was, but we can't talk about that. I won't talk about that, but I'm I'm trying to put that little tidbit out there to me as a little bone for people. Like, oh, when, are you when talking about that little special extra that John told me without really? Yeah. He's well, like, I'll make one quote. We won't give it away. Now that I'm 91, I, I I'm going to tell you something that I haven't said before. Right. And I and can come clean with this. I can come clean with this. And it's not in and, the book. And it's not in the book. And all of a sudden, it's like, what? <laughs> my ear, my ear, my you know, my ears went. Spit <laughs> it out, and, John. What is it? <laughs> so oh, yeah, I, I was just like, looked yeah. over in the chat. Steve, look, <laughs> Tack Tack had a question. He wanted to ask Ryan. Oh, <laughs> it? Well, uh, did he? Did he find out the true story on the cow? <laughs> <laughs> I, re- I really didn't indulge in the cow. I, I, I skipped the cow completely. <laughs> okay. You, if you haven't read uh, The Creature, folks, uh, you, you won't get that. But if you've read The Creature, you'll get it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that squatch was after some center line bovine. <laughs> oh, Jack, oh, that hurt You're me. Oh. picky in the forest, I guess. Now, you know, I'm going to have to mute out for a second. I'll be right back. <laughs> uh, I think we just killed Chris and he's still listening, so we can keep on going and keep on if we keep him laughing, oh. we'll keep him muted. <laughs> oh. oh, that got me. Oh Tack, killing me. <clears throat> yeah, that's that's good. It was a good one. Thank you. I was wondering that too, but I was too oh. shy to ask. <laughs> so <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I didn't even want to ask about the cow. I just <laughs> avoided it all completely. Like I know it's in the book, but uh, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, it's not. Kind of makes you want to swear off dairy. I don't know. <laughs> I'm uh, would you like some milk? Or no, thank you. No head cheese. I no. no. I don't know where to go after that. Hold on, head sorry. cheese isn't even cheese. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> I might have to mute here. Holy cow. <laughs> oh, now, man. Now, a lot of people don't know, but I remember this. Lauren Coleman took a bunch of crap because he talked about that. Yeah, he did. He started talking about the creature at the conference, at a conference, and he started talking about the bovine adventure. And my <laughs> God, it, it was like, wait, wait, wait. How, how? Civilization has progressed over the years. It's like God. that. My God, if well, we even mentioned the cow on a TV show in 2006, that may have caused an uproar. Yeah. But, you know, talking- also, I remember, I'm sorry, Ryan. Let me, no, one good. Good. Uh, I remember at, at, about that time when Lauren was doing this uh, uh, his write-ups <laughs> on this. He did a lot Just of because. stuff on Bigfoot sexuality and which is yes. stuff that I wasn't interested in. I don't think anybody else was either, to be honest, but it was a whole, that, that cow thing led to a whole thing of, of uh, articles on Bigfoot sexuality. And uh, that's just never been a subject that I was interested in. Uh, I, don't I don't know. It's turf. I just didn't want to go into. <laughs> yeah. My face is hurting guys. Oh, 
Okay, so OT has a legit question. Did I miss the show? I didn't miss the show over the last couple of weeks. No, we were actually a uh, technical glitch, uh, a couple of other things going on over the last few shows. And then last week we were going to have a show, and then I got horribly sick, very uncomfortable, like minutes to the show. I was like, what the heck? So that's, that's, uh, that's why, OT. So, um, as far as, uh, I lost um, my track of mind. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't, I, I, I off. see, I, I have a train wreck of thought. I don't have a train of thought. It, it was the cow. That was the cow. Damn cows. Hey, it looks like, uh, oh, oh, Linda's like, so <laughs> like, well, we need to know. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I don't want to be a prom date. No, sorry. <laughs> so if I seem a little distracted, all of a sudden my door opened up and my dog just walked in and he just walked out. Like <laughs> he's checking up and seeing on what's going on. Uh, he knew there was talk about animals and he well, left. That's right. He's like, um, well, when did I hear something about a cow? <laughs> 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 Nothing I want to be part of. I'm out of here. <laughs> oh. No, 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 OT. I'm not going to say that name this week. I just can't. <laughs> no. no, this is a uh, uh, never mind. It's just uh, I'm not going to mention it. <laughs> uh, so, okay, so um, you know, I can't. I'm I'm just trying to word some of these questions so we don't give away too much. Um, you know. What was your, uh, you know, uh, what was your biggest, you think, challenge in the recreations? Was it the Bigfoot? Uh, that's always difficult. You don't want to just go to your local Halloween shop and say, give me a Bigfoot costume because they look horrible. <laughs> um, but yet, you know, we're on a pretty tight budget when we yeah. make these. Um, I, I found a guy that did a great uh, headpiece and he was reasonable. Yeah, uh, the rest was just getting a body, which we kind of we ended up getting like a Halloween one. But I took it to a seamstress, and she kind of really worked it for me, which looked incredible, like pretty damn close to a Chewbacca outfit as we could get it. <laughs> I mean, she did it. She did a good job. And I mean, I said, uh, let's let's keep it under this number and just do the best we can. And, and I think it works for what we wanted to do. I, I wanted a sympathetic Bigfoot. I didn't want an evil, dark, anything like that. Uh, maybe an older Bigfoot looking. Like he was aged and uh, his health was bad, which was part of the book, um, in my opinion. So um, it, it, it that's always frustrating because um, we just don't have the budget like we'd like. So we kind of do what we can and, you know, shoot for the stars and hit the moon, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, for, you know, you, you know, I thought you did a, a, a wonderful job. I mean, you captured all the elements. I mean. You know, the re recreations don't have to be exact. It was kind of, and what I liked about it, it was kind of done like in a folksy type of way. Mm -hmm. um, oh, the the actor. You, got you got recreations in this thing? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, great. No, it's not Steve just talking for an hour and a half. No. Okay. Yeah. I thought it was going to be like an interview thing, you know, and that was no. it. Okay. Good. No, Good. no, there's, re and that, that's what I meant. But when he would read, uh, there would be recreations while portions of the book were being read. And, uh, you know, so it was really, it was cool. And, um, from Jane's perspective, like, yep. you know, yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. From, from the, the perspective of, of the writer. Yep. No, and no, no cows were damaged or, or abused in any recreation. Of course. No, there was a deer that was <laughs> murdered. <laughs> I guess. Oh, don't say that. Well, <laughs> And, uh, you know, but uh, I think we found a nice way around it by doing it like animation style. So it, we didn't have to really do it. <laughs> and welcome, Jerry. Jerry, good to see you, brother. Crazy part is I had a, an actor already in mind to play the role and like bailed on me like probably two weeks before we were oh, going to shoot all yeah. that. And I'm like, what are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 the guy that played it, Bill uh, Robertson, was a friend of mine from upstate. And uh, I thought, hey, perfect. And that was his first acting role. I said, don't worry. I'll, I'll walk you through everything. <laughs> and he, he did a fabulous job for two days. Yeah. I mean, the poor guy. I mean, it was <laughs> we had rented these cabins. And I wasn't even sure we'd be able to use them because the whole 
Ah, Linda. What's going on? Lin- Linda, that's a great question. No, this is not one of the faux news uh, shows for Bigfoot Info. We only put on the real stuff. And tonight we're talking about uh, Mountain Devil 2, uh, The Search for Jan Clement, which was a book, uh, The Creature, uh, Personal Experiences with Bigfoot, written in 1976. Uh, if you go back to our show archives, back in October of last year, or September of last year, I believe we did a special edition on uh, the book. And now we're talking with the filmmaker, Ryan Cavalline of uh, Legend Hunter Films. Legend Hunter Films. There you go. And talking about Mountain Devil 2. So this is definitely not the faux Bigfoot Information <laughs> Network. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you got a parrot. We're well, talking about the cow, and you know the all the animals come out. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, my, my dog, my, my dog has returned to the the room, and he is now sitting in his chair, kind of sleeping, kind of now. Na- oh, no, nope, he's leaving. <laughs> okay, we have had that. Okay, the dog has been ejected from the ballpark. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Actually, Chris just mentioned that I was on America's yeah. Book of Secrets. Yeah, it was on today too. Earlier today. I, I am sorry to hear that, Tom. Uh, you might want to try the YouTube channel. Uh, just uh, You don't have to log in or anything like that. If you just go to the YouTube channel, it should be live. Works yeah. sometimes better than Facebook. Yeah. So, um, or it could be the internet connection, you know. It's a long way from here to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, uh, Linda, uh no, Linda, I believe that was September of 2019. It may have been November. Um, I don't have that in my my head. Oh, God. Uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I say, August, September? Yeah, I think it was September. So that would have been... A fall month was in mind. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, November is a fall month. Oh, yeah. yeah, true. <laughs> ah, well, thank you, Mick. <laughs> Nick just wrote the only info about this show or some of the hoaxes that I exposed. <laughs> what was that guy's name? Oh, that's uh, Mick. <laughs> oh. You thought it was something else, didn't you? Yes, yeah. it was. Oh, potty mind over there. <laughs> um, and I. I'm down to drinking Coca-Cola Zero now because for some reason Ski is sold out in Kentucky. I don't know what the heck. They got some the, kind the of factory new... is closed due to COVID-19. Yeah, probably. I don't know. Well, you know, they said it was a, a aluminum can. Uh, there's several rumors going around of why you can't buy Ski, and one of them is uh, they had a, a shortage on the aluminum cans because of COVID. Well, you know, hey, this is an aluminum can. Yep. You know. It sucks, yes, too. And, and Linda, if you're wondering, where, where this is not the show where we go out every time and see a Bigfoot or hear a Bigfoot, or uh, this is the show where we talk to people, and, you know, if we have some field films, we'll show them out as well. And, uh, you know, occasionally we'll show a picture of O.J. Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> and the limited uh, addiction of uh, <laughs> Brock coming out. <laughs> um, yeah. So now, now my my uh, my question to you is: What's your thoughts on the Bigfoot phenomenon? Now, now we're going off topic. Oh here. boy, I I'm what you call a hopeful believer. No, I'm hope, fine. I'm hopeful it's possible. I've had two or three experiences I can't explain, and I keep a pretty open mind about it all. Uh, when we were shooting the first Mountain Devil, we shot a lot in Rockton, Pennsylvania there had been a quite a few sightings. So Dave Rupert and I were down back in the woods about uh, miles, miles back. And we were in a clearing area and that's the first experience I ever had where rocks were thrown at me. Oh, cool. So at that point I'm like, Holy cow, there's something to this. Oh. <laughs> so, but until, <laughs> until I see one, I don't think I'll totally believe, but I am hopeful that it's possible. And I'm open to the idea that they're out there and we just haven't found one yet. Tack yeah. does have a question in the chat. Uh, did doing this film lead you towards any other cryptid stories in Western PA in New York? Mm. I'm not sure what he's asking. Did did, did you get any uh, new stories? Oh, uh, not really. No, no. 
because I really kept it focused on the book as much as possible. Yeah. I mean, uh, honestly, when we were down in Dunbar, there's so many stories in Dunbar. Yeah. It is a hot zone. It Chestnut is. Ridge, that whole area is such a hot zone. I mean, we could do a whole film just on Chestnut, just all the yeah. sightings and stuff. Just, but every time someone want to tell me, hey, there's a sighting, I'm like, nah, don't care. I'm doing it on the book. Mm-hmm. Sorry. <laughs> and which I, I should be open to the idea of other sightings, but it was the fact that was, I wanted to stay on point of what we were doing. Yeah. yeah. But visit Dunbar. It, it's it's a lot of stuff going on down there. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm I I'm down that that area every time there's a Pennsylvania Bigfoot camping adventure. Uh-huh. And uh, literally, uh, it was kind of funny because Clements Point not too uh, far. Were, uh, was not too far from there, oh. and uh, it was kind of funny because um, how I triangulated that position was talking with an entomologist who lives in the area that Dave Dragason actually directed me to Mm -hmm. so within a day i got a phone call back from the guy and we had a long discussion and you know i said well this is where he said he took his friend and so i have it you know he he said he had to drive by the diggins and uh you know he specifically said uh public lands 51 you know, the, that's uh, interesting. Very right? interesting. And that's in the book. And I'm going, yeah. he took him to public 51 and he had to drive by the diggings. So and I'm sitting there and he left from, uh, what's the town? Union town. Union town. Yeah. So now I'm sitting there plotting it out. I said, well, it's gotta be in this geographical. So I get this guy on, uh, on the horn. Now this entomologist has a very intricate, um, uh, what the heck, you guys? Are I saw that there. too, Steve. <laughs> no, 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 no. You missed the entire joke, Linda. We were. It's a joke based on uh, the old uh, that. So it's not protecting anybody. It's a joke. So. <laughs> It had to do with the new Broncos coming out, Lynn. And I'm going to associate you with a... Uh, no, uh, no, 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 no. No, he, <laughs> that guy should be in jail. <laughs> yeah, He should Linda, still be in jail. You got, here, you, got here a little, you got here a little bit late, Linda. <laughs> yeah, you caught the earlier one. The, the joke about the Bronco, because uh, they're coming out with a new Bronco. So uh, just rewind it. You'll see it. I think you'll get a kick out of it. Yeah, I was I was I was glancing through the chat room and I was just like, "Oh, what, what?" <laughs> no, we're we're not the we're not those guys, Linda. We're not. We're those not guys. those guys. Nope. Uh, my my actual background is a private investigator who's worked with law enforcement for thirty plus years. So don't worry about me trying to protect that turd turd from <laughs> from what he did. Um, and I watched the entire trial back then, but that's neither here nor there. Where was I? We were talking about anybody remember <laughs> chat Jan room, Clement. please? Huh? Jan Clement. Yeah. Thanks. Clement. Thanks, Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. I was talking about my phone call with the entomologist. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's got me a little perturbed. Um, <laughs> why anybody would think that off of just that is. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I, I ended up talking after triangulating this this position with this gentleman. And he said, well, that's right in the area of a place called Clements Point. And then I'm like, Clements Point? Yeah, there's an area called Clements Point. So he kind of told me where to find it. I was on the phone with him moving Google Maps. And that's when we got this. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. I posted the OJ post. I live in Florida. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Uh, wow. So we got somebody accusing me of posting the OJ post. Where did I post that? 
What are you talking about? Oh, <laughs> no. This show is about Bigfoot. If you're going to keep on talking about OJ, yeah, you can hit the road. But anyway, <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, we have uh, this, and and that's what Clement's point, where Clement's point was. Mm-hmm. So it was actually based on the the corner of this. And what I find interesting is, of course, we know the 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 uh, shed had uh, the the cabin had burned down, and there it is. And we have uh, a pond. So it, it it was very interesting. And it the, the funny thing is, he always said the Diggins had a private road and all that stuff, and uh, there was. There was private roads all over the place. Now, I actually have a map with <coughs> the actual... Um, <laughs> and we actually have uh, uh, the map with the, the, the street markers on it, but I'm not going to put on it. But the interesting thing is, is that uh, there was a comment in the later editions books that nearby there was some uh, new housing built. Mm-hmm. Also very consistent with this picture in the area, actually to the, uh, to the bottom uh, right corner. If you go out a little bit more, there's a whole bunch of new houses that were built over the last 20 years, 30 years. So it, it all matches up. And Ryan, if you ever want to get down there, let me know. I'll go down. We, Whenever's clever, we'll go down. I we, just we, uh, yeah, we because I have the actual map of where what roads connect to this. So the you, little square there is the burnt cabin remains right here. Yeah, think, yeah. yeah. And I was like, that's a burnt cabin. In fact, yeah. you can even see where the chimney was. Yeah. Mm. And you see it. Mm-hmm. And it looks like it may have had a porch at one time right in that area. So. Who, if it's true, that's great. But whoever did the research did a hell of a great job. Well, you know. Put it all together like that, you know. Yeah. So. uh you know, I look at the, the, the this whole thing, you know, could it be real? Because uh, the point's definitely sure this does look. And, and it was very promising, like, oh, my God, there's a cabin. There's a pond. Makes a lot of sense. It's burnt out cabin. It's built, it's built right. near new housing. Everything matches up. Now, is it possible? And, and see, this is where it gets a little dicey. They started building those houses, and I believe Tomical left that area in the mid eighties mm-hmm. because he knew about the fire. He knew about the new housing, obviously. Yeah. I mean, so to me, you know, whoever owns this property, and I could never find who owns this particular property because it doesn't have a street address because there's no house on it. There's no house on it anymore. It's just property. But it'd be really interesting to find out who owns that property. That may actually be uh, Jan Clement, but I still believe that uh, parts of Jan Clement at least are contomical, and that's the way I'll leave it at that. Um, still a mystery. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 is it possible that John knew the area? Absolutely. Absolutely. Was he an outdoorsman? Well, he was an earth science guy, so he probably spent a fair amount of time in the woods. You know. I- I, have I a don't book, know. I have a book you wrote about survival techniques. If you're lost in the woods. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. So I don't think it was highly published, but I'm like mm, the writing's very similar. <laughs> uh, I just, uh, yeah, I'm I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I might have know. to find this on Google Earth now and search for places that look like they might have been disturbed for a burial site. Okay, so he didn't bury him on this property, Chris. Oh, he didn't? Oh, that's no. right. That's right. That's right. He put him in the car or something and took him like. Took for a ride. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> took the body for a ride. I'm, I'm not thinking. If... It's been too long. It is a cool pond, though. I wonder if they got any fish in there. I'm trying to get the other picture. There it is. So. And yes, I am giving away a, a street name with this one. But so this is the area. This whole area is the area I think that if a burial had occurred, 
that it was there in that area. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, there's a lot of relations to. Um, uh, there's a lot of relations to Wimps Gap, the state line, and its proximity to a particular park. And uh, using that, um, and it's kind of funny because I had found uh, old satellite photos of the area. And, uh, you know, the, the interesting thing is everything that was done, um, everything that was done, I'm trying, I'm, I'm just scrolling here trying to find if I can find the satellite. And that's right where he said he could see West Virginia. Yeah. Right. Now, the funny thing is, this is the area, if I'm correct, that should be yep, Wimps Gap, 1962. Um, not the topo map, but he said that there was a pull-off in there, which you don't see on any of the new maps. Mm-hmm. But if you look at the old map, ah. you, you start seeing the pull-off. Huh. And that's definitely something there. If not there, it could have been entirely up in this area. So who knows? Um, Very interesting to speculate. And uh, one thing, you know, the Wimps Gap is kind of, you know, it's like one of those where you may be able to, to kind of figure it out. But this is like dead on. <laughs> We've got a pinpoint on this. And it's the only thing in the area that actually, you know, meets that criteria. But before so. you go out looking for it, just watch the film first. It might save you some time. Yeah, very true. <laughs> very true. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm not, I'd be, not trying I'd to be, give away anything, but no. it'd save you hours of running around the woods for no reason. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but you know, if, if anything, this, this site is, uh, definitely worth looking at. I, I just can't get over it. Um, well, you know, it's always best when you're writing about something, unless you're going to do a complete work of fiction. Well, even if you are doing fiction, you got to throw some truth in there. Mm -hmm. And this guy knew this place, you know? And so he put that in it, you know, where, whoever, whoever it was. And uh, well, that made it that made it that much better. And like I said, you know, Tomical was known for writing other books, including fiction. Yeah. And strangely, they all had some very similar elements that the creature did. So that's why I kind of lean towards that the actual writer of the book was, was Tomical. <clears throat> now, to understand that or understand, you know, to counter that, watch. You know, I would say that watching Tomical speak about it is very interesting. Um, kind of maybe have scratching my head for a while. So, well, he was definitely a storyteller. So, um, but also Stan Gordon made a lot of great points. Is that all the phenomena that was going on down Dunbar or Chestnut right. Ridge at the time? They, they were in the newspaper, right and left. Those articles, right? So yeah. it could have been easily to extract some of that and. Well, that that, that was the other thing, too. And I made mention of that, you know, in, you know, in in the the cold case episode Mm. was that, you know, he obviously whoever wrote this book did their Bigfoot research because they named a witness Mm -hmm. by name and location and what she had seen. And they named Stan Gordon specifically. Mm -hmm. So and obviously at that point in time, Stan Gordon was the media guy. You know, it was a Bigfoot sighting. Okay, all the, they all rushed out to interview Stan. Yeah. UFO sighting, Stan. So. Well, I asked Stan about it. I thought, what, what do you think about it? You know, your name's in this book, blah, blah, blah. He's like, I'm so busy investigating, I didn't have time to look into it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, really? Oh, right. I, I was like, <laughs> my God. Yeah, you know. It, <sighs> Which was true at that time. It was yeah. it was an on, ongoing yeah. sights constantly. Well. To, you know, to make, uh, and this all goes back to investigation, investigation 101. You have a, a cold case here, you know, in this particular case. But that's because we had no clues. Here's Clifford the Big Red Dog Season 1. Episode. No, no, what the heck? Oh, thank you, Charlie. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. 
Um, hang on a sec. No, Stan didn't write the book. He he swore up and down. Uh, it wasn't him, <laughs> which I don't think it was him, because I've read St Stan's books and and it's completely. If you read the creature, it's two different types of writing. Yep. Um, I, I apologize. I had a little technical difficulty. My Alexa decided to play Clifford all of a sudden. <laughs> the I, like to go black. To, I like to go to people's houses that have those and say, Alexa, set alarm for 3 a.m. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Set, set, uh, now, come on. You did it. You did a show called The Exorcism. You did a documentary yes. called The Exorcism Prayer. You yeah. set it for three fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> that film almost killed me. So yeah, I don't. I don't mess around with that stuff anymore. <laughs> uh, like literally, almost killed me. Like yeah. <laughs> well. <clears throat> so Pat Turner asks. Um, Pat Turner asks, "Are you in production for anything now, Ryan?" Yes, I have. Two films going right now. Uh, we have one called uh, Myth and Mutants, <laughs> which is uh, based on Pennsylvania folklore stories. Uh, Not Kentucky were, folklore stories? I haven't made it to Kentucky yet. I still wander around Pennsylvania quite a bit since I live here. It's just, it's just convenient. <laughs> Chris just took that one as a like glancing blow. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm doing one about the afterlife, which... Uh, uh, people that had near death experiences, but we haven't really dived too far in that yet. So yeah, we're always, always filming something until the wheels fall off. That's what you got to do. Or I get senile and don't know any better. <coughs> um, what, where was I going with, uh, investigation? Um, a lot of times, you know, in the seventies, we didn't have the technology we have today to get these answers really quick. Um, that's number one. Uh, number two is that there are just some cases that you need to let play out and play out over time. And eventually the truth starts to leak out, whether it's true, whether it's not. We still have a mystery here, mm -hmm. but we have a lot more answers than we did, you know, just in the last couple of years, I think. Right. Than we had 20 years ago. You know, agree or disagree. I mean, I, I agree. I just think, uh, <clears throat> I guess maybe John says it best. You know, I'm 91 years old. Might as well talk about it a bit. Yeah. <laughs> and have some fun and have some fun with it really is. Yeah. And, and, and I think that was very gracious of him. Yeah. 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 Well, you know. exactly. Uh, and you know, when you get to that, <coughs> when you get to that age, um, you know, what, it's what the hell do I have to lose, you know? <laughs> it's right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I was really, and it was like a stunner. It was like, really? <laughs> but he still leaves it with a big question mark. He did. He wouldn't admit. Yeah. Just, uh, it was all on his terms, which is fine. Well, you yeah. Know, it's it's his publishing and it's his his baby, I guess. So I just think it was best to, it, when, when I talked to him, I said, there's a whole generation of Bigfooters uh, that don't even know about this book. Yeah. And I think bringing it back, around you're going to get a whole new generation of people looking into this which i think it, uh, it, books like this you don't want them to fall away yep exactly you know so uh chris you want to take over a quick second i gotta run do something yeah man uh, i think that anybody needs if you hadn't read the creature by jan clement you need to pick up a copy because it is good and i don't know if it's still available on amazon or not do you know ryan yes it is it's still available yep. on amazon for a mere nine ninety nine, I think. Well, and you can actually get the the book and the movie off our website. You can get a combo pack, uh, uh, which I, I'm, not, I'm not even sure what we're selling them at. <laughs> but the, our <laughs> website is, uh, you know, the www.legendhunterfilms.com. Uh, uh, you can get the film there, and you can get the, like I said, the bundle pack with the book and the movie. Well, so that'd be the way to go. Trying to save you some time and headache of looking around on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> and Allard, Ed, Alan Edward Gaines says in the 1970s I can't put your comment up on your sorry I have to read it Alan but it's in the 1970s we had 8 tracks rotary dial telephones and libraries that's right <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it used to be a whole lot more difficult to find out stuff in the 70s. And I remember when I was a kid, I wrote, I sent off for a book from the Yakima Bait Company because at that time I was really into fishing, man. And I had to send off for their catalog. Uh, you had to, I, I can't remember, I think it was like uh, 50 cents or something like that. And you had to send them a self, a, a SAZE, self addressed stamped envelope and 50 cents. And then they would like mail you this catalog. So, and it was in uh, Yakima, Washington. <laughs> and here I was, I was just a kid, man. And I sent all this stuff off, man, and put the money in the envelope, you know, oh, no. off, and it was like, you know, six weeks later, I finally got a little bait catalog in the little, little envelope that I sent them. And it was just printed off, you know, uh, but I was so overjoyed <laughs> <laughs> now, man, you just hop on the website and look at a catalog click, you know, instantly, you know, it, it's really amazing. You know, Chris, uh, Chris, that wasn't the first time. The first time Chris sent away for something, it was for a decoder ring. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. way you can listen to the radio and get the code for the night. That's right. Remember, eat your Ovaltine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, man, I use those Sazies. Yeah, Alan, you're right. Sazy, self-addressed stamped envelope. You had to send that, man, or they couldn't send it back to you because postage was probably... I don't know. Three cents, cents, five cents. It wasn't much, you know, but you had to send it though. And the but 50 it was, cents. It was a different time. Yeah, it was a different time. Sure they were was. probably making a killing on that too. Probably. Yeah, all no. I got was a, a little a little bait catalog that had been printed. Of course, you know, they didn't have a printer back then. So evidently they had to use like this, you know, the machine, ditto machine. Yeah. Whatever you, where you roll it and it. Mimeograph. Yeah. You can get high smelling the ink while you're doing that. You know, they used to have Good them at school. Good yeah. times. <laughs> and that's what it was. It was like little blue ink and stuff. It was cool. Good Lord, Benny. Now old. postage is an arm and a leg. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Jeez. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I remember the overnight rates used to be, and they like jumped like $8. I'm like, what? Yeah. Like, holy. Um, yeah. But, yeah, so. Uh, oh, that's, that's a good it. question, Tack. <laughs> uh, what got you interested in cryptids? <laughs> well, I have a, a slew, uh, a, a library of films I, I've shot over the years, starting back, like, in 1999. And I, and I did a lot of horror movies over the years because that's the cheapest and easiest way. And most distribution companies will pick those up pretty quick. Um, I got tired of doing them. And I got to a point where I'm like, uh, let's do a monster movie. I'm like, let's do Bigfoot. And at the time, I always thought Bigfoot was just a West Coast thing. I never knew Bigfoot was in my own backyard. So I sent about a lot of emails to all the Bigfoot groups in Pennsylvania. I'm like, oh my goodness, Bigfoot's in Pennsylvania. And uh, I had the first email that came back was from a buddy. He's now a good friend of mine. Uh, and he said, hey, uh, you know, Bigfoot's in your own backyard, referring to Rockton, Pennsylvania. Yeah. So, uh, and that really got me on board because they kind of introduced me to uh, uh, the world of Bigfoot. It was uh, Denny Kaliski and his wife. And uh, it, I remember it was like in April. And he's like, I'm going to come up, show you around to where all the sightings were up in your area. And it was April for some reason. And, and we had like this blizzard in April. And he comes up. Never in that, fails. He comes up in a Ford Bronco. <laughs> Ah, uh, Ford Bronco. Uh, uh, Ford and he's Bronco. Like, he's like, Hang on, Ford and Bronco. This is the first time I met him. <laughs> but it wasn't OJ. It wasn't. Um, Steve, so don't get, be that guy. <laughs> I'm being that guy. <laughs> so he comes in. He's like, Well, get in and I'll show you. I'm like, Oh, boy. And if you ever met Denny, he looks like a, a, a rock, an old rock star from back in the day, just a, like a roadie. And uh, I'm like, we're going to die out in the middle of the woods here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he introduced me to like all the, the all the groups and all the people. And I met like Stan and, uh, and everyone through Denny. So, I mean, I was just so into it then. I was like, I was hooked. I was a Bigfoot fanatic. And I still am to this day. I just... Like I said, I'm a hopeful believer. I'm not completely convinced until I see one, but um, that's kind of how the whole filming kind of started. It was just kind of stumbling upon it more than anything. Yeah. 
Very now look at all the Bigfoot films in the last 10 years. I mean, yeah. I don't want to say I was an innovator, but <laughs> yeah. I was probably, um, probably one of the first ones that kind of did it back, way back in 2010 was the first one was Mountain Devil. And now, now there's a whole slew of them. But So what, what started you on Mountain Devil? Mountain Devil, for those who haven't seen Mountain Devil, uh, The Search for Frank Peterson, that was a very right. interesting uh, film as well. Uh, back when I, at the time I was just filming the groups and going around with them for like a year, just filming them, like kind of like a Bigfoot one one. This is what researchers do. And I felt it was great stuff, but there was no story in there. Right. Like we've talked about, I, I like to have something, you know, there's gotta be substance to it. And at the time, Dave uh, Rupert and I came across this story in Phillipsburg, Pennsylvania, about uh, these two hunters that were at a cabin claim. They seen one claim. They shot one claim. They buried one. Uh, the family didn't want to be a part of anything. So we had to use aliases through everything, but their story was just so compelling. I'm like, did this really happen? And we kind of did the research the best we could to find out where the cabin was and it was gone and everything. It's kind of similar to what, hmm. uh, the creature story kind of was, uh, but it was just, uh, such, such a great story that, um, we kind of ran with it cause we couldn't do the creature at that time. Yeah, so, and, and the ending of that one was quite interesting as well. Yeah. But for those yeah. who haven't seen that one, that's another one where you're waiting to, you hear about it, you hear about it, you hear about it, and finally you end, you get to see all of it. You know, I've had so many people ask me, did you, did you really think, think that's what it was at the end? I'm still on the fence on it. I don't know. Yeah. I still think that could have been a, a very mange bear. Yep. You know. Uh, you know, you know, See, as a filmmaker, even as a filmmaker, I don't believe everything. I'm like, yeah, I question it, you know? And, and you know what? That's, 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 you know, that's what I love about the whole thing Yeah, is, is that you, you just tell it like the story is being told to you. You know, a lot of times people would, you know, when we have witnesses on the show or we have witnesses on the radio show back way, you know, when we were doing, when we were on blog talk, people used to you know, say, well, you know, I don't believe their story or, you know, you ever, yeah, there's there's two different seats you have to take. Mm -hmm. People understand when when I'm in this chair. Yes, I like to put out all the investigative stuff and stuff like that. If I have somebody that's a witness that talks to me and, and okay, uh, you have a story to tell. Here's the story. Mm -hmm. I haven't. I always prerequisite. I haven't investigated this, but you know they have a story to tell. Let them tell their story. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. As long as, and I feel as long as you put the caveat in there, hey, or you stay on the fence about it, <clears throat> you know, what's there, you know, not to believe in, in a simple story. Uh, if it's a complex story, then, hey, you know what, then we may have to dig in. And then sometimes I don't have them on. Uh, Justin Smeha was one of those people. Mm -hmm. You know, we had Justin on and you have to, okay, we're going to take, and actually his driver was on the show as well. Um, which was a first, the first time anybody had heard from him. So you kind of had to take it at face value at that particular point in time because none of the DNA testing had been done or anything like that. And at the end of the night, you know, you sit back and let me play it back and let me listen to it. You know, did I miss something? Did I catch something? Did I, you know? Mm -hmm. And then as he did more interviews, you know, you see a little bit a difference, a little bit of, you know, uh, so to me, it looked like a bit of work in progress for a bit. So, you know, you, but then you get to a person like Tomical, who's had all these years to keep his story straight, if he's ever asked. Did a you good know, job. <laughs> and well, the fact that, well, you know, you have to understand that, that, you know, I understand, you know, the PG film, you mm -hmm. know, in, in Bob Gimlin's accounting. And he's had a long time to think about it too, to keep it straight. But, the fact is, is that his story never differed from day one versus day, you know, 569, right. whatever, uh, how many times he's, he's told the story, um, which is quite impressive. Um, John Tomical, other than just cursory tidbits over the air, I, I really, Ryan, you are the first person that got him to sit down for an interview Yeah, that I know of. Yeah. I don't, I don't see, I, you know, I know we had some correspondence with Lauren Coleman or maybe a phone call, I believe it was a phone call. Yeah. I, um, I, which I was surprised I got Lauren to take part in the documentary. Yeah, she, that, I didn't know, think he wanted yeah. really, which I'm grateful. I'm completely grateful. Yeah. But uh, I thought at that point he didn't want to do anything about that, but he was very open about it and talked about yeah, it. Well, you know, as uh, everybody that's in, uh, 
uh, as uh, uh, Pat, you might want to watch the f $1 million Bigfoot bounty story changed a little bit there. Changed a lot. Uh, yeah, so. especially about the, the little one, you know, it went from, uh, he shot it to, he choked, choked it me. out. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. Next, next thing you know, he's going to be, you know. Well, I, I don't want to speculate. Back flipping on, in there. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there's there's so much to that story. And to me, it's kind of a big deflection. Well, hey, I just got the manuscript and I wrote the book. I published the book. Hmm. You know, yeah. um, alligate, you know, to me, there would have to be, you know, obviously, you know, I don't know. It's very, it's very, uh, very sordid thing. Did he pay him under the table? See, I would have, I would have had so many different questions <laughs> that it probably would have got to kick me out. But did he, did you pay Mr. Clement under the table or did he actually receive royalties <laughs> for the book? You know, stuff he, like. He really know, wouldn't go into Clement too much. He really wouldn't. Like I'd ask about what's his personality, what you know, but you know, he had, according to him, according to John, he had already passed away, so it wasn't really much to talk about. But I'm like, well, where was he from? Did he have family? He just wouldn't indulge in any of it. Just, just yeah. is what it is. Here it is. And and that's the that's the interesting thing because you know, if he passed away, what's the harm? The family didn't want the family to. But the family, you know, he had sold the property and he divorced and he didn't have any kids, did he? He made a promise and he kept his yeah. promise. So um yeah. I guess that's keeping yeah. loose lip or you know, your lips shut for all these years and just making keeping your promise, I guess. But it's yeah. like I tell everyone, I, I like I, I'm a I'm a storyteller first, a filmmaker second, and a researcher third. So when anyone comes to me with uh, a story, it, it, I take it for what it is. It's a story until um, you can prove facts on it. I, it's just how it is. Yeah. So when you, you got to present it in a film format, well, these are these are the facts. This is yeah. what the story was. I mean, and whether and or not that, it happened or not, and, I don't know. And what I love about it is, is that you also put my facts in there too. Yeah. You know, and and you, you know that to me is a documentary. By by doing that, by putting the story in it and the and some of the facts that I found out and some of the facts anybody else has found out that kind of makes it a documentary. You know what I'm saying? That's why yeah. you didn't fail. Uh, I think you I, think you did, but you really I, didn't because you put the facts in. To, I, to put some I, reasonable I, doubt. I guess I, I was more disappointed. We didn't have more solid facts by the end. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everything was like, yeah, it could go. Well, they, it was on the fence. Everything was on the fence. I knew going into it. The only solid fact we would ever get is a confession. Yeah, we didn't get it. <laughs> no. No, and I wouldn't expect one. That's why I, I never really progressed to talk to Topical at that point. Mm -hmm. Because when I, after all these years, we're not going to get a confession. No, no. And I had them for a couple of days of filming, and nope. <laughs> well, you had some. A little bit. He, he teased yeah. a little, but a little bit. Well, not enough to say it was him, I guess. Right. Yep. Uh, but yeah, so I, I think that you know that that you know that's that's not a failure, brother. That's not a failure at all. Um, you know, the the Mountain Devil one, yeah. I mean, you know that necessarily wasn't per se an investigative documentary. That was just a recall, uh, basically a recounting, and I, I thought that was kind of cool. I mean, it, it, this one is is much more. Like I said, you put you got a lot more. Uh, researchers on the ground talking about the topic of that particular book mm -hmm. and about what they thought about it and about facts surrounding it and stuff like that. That is, you know, being a documentarian. So take that pat on the back. We do our best. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we do what we can. Don't knock yourself. I'm saying, Oh, I know. <laughs> no. Cause I, 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 you know, I, I, you know, I hear you say, well, you know, I, you know, I really think we did a great job telling the story, but a documentary, no, you did a great job. Uh, well, I appreciate you know, it. I really do. Yeah. That's, uh, that's the one thing I wanted to put out there. Um, you know, uh, so let's talk about, I, I, I want to get off topic just a little bit, but I, I know you got kind of weirded out by the whole exorcism thing. 
Oh, and, it was bad. Um, you know, any, any, you know, and I don't like to pop off on the paranormal topic. These are totally two um, different topics. So let me, let me just predicate that for the audience out there that you know, for folks who don't know, um, I do run a paranormal group. I am a demonologist and these are completely two different topics. And I don't think there's anything paranormal or I should say supernatural about Sasquatch. Everything is paranormal. It's outside the normal, but it's not supernatural. So, uh, but so you're um, not you're not on the fence of the interdimensional Bigfoot. That's mm. on the fence. <laughs> no, <laughs> neither am I. <laughs> no. I you know I I was I've been blessed. I've seen them a couple of times, mm -hmm. and no, there's nothing interdimensional about them. <laughs> they were there. They walked off. And that was it. Done. Okay. They didn't blink well, that's out. That's I kept saying. You should do Mount Devil Three on interdimensional. I'm like, mm, nah. Yeah. Let's keep yeah. the aliens there and the Bigfoot here. Well, yeah, you know, you know, and uh, you, kudos to Bill Lancaster who did the whole UFO alien connection. I'm like, oh, come on. Now. Uh, yeah. Tomatoes, tomatoes. Well, say you know, those, those people, they report. You, you say Bigfoot. potato, I say diabetes. That's right. <laughs> Back to that meme. The, the people, they report seeing Bigfoot and watching it disappear into a portal. You know, you know, I don't know. I don't believe that. But they could be telling the truth. But until I see it, you know, I'm sorry. I, I, well, I can't accept that. We, we've discussed that before, though. And yeah. Discussed that. There's so many other psychological factors that they could have actually believed they saw that. Uh, yeah. Because of the trauma they're going through or, you know, possibly infrasound and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, there there is yeah. some. there is some, you know, just because they have a paranormal experience doesn't necessarily mean they didn't have an experience. Right. Uh, and that's that's the way uh, uh, I look at it. If they're from UFOs, I've never seen a, you know, we didn't send men to the moon naked, did we? <laughs> no. You know, when you think about biological elements and stuff like that, that's just fact that, you know, uh, you know, even if we had a planet that, say, was consisted the same as our planet, it's oxygen rich. You can breathe without breathing apparatus and all that stuff. <clears throat> the stuff that we'd still have to wear containment suits. Why? Because of the bacteria on that planet we may not yep. have resistance to. Yep. So that whole theory of, you know, oh, it's no. Yeah. Dude, it's just no. like War of the Worlds. It works both ways. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. H.G. Yeah. Wells, man. I. Well, that I mean, what a genius writer he was—a man of, yeah. uh, way ahead of his time to think of something like that. Yeah, but it's the truth. It's it's the truth. I mean, uh, so anyway, uh, getting back to this whole thing. So you you did you get any? Uh, you must have seen some interesting things doing the. Uh, well, it was it was funny how the project even happened. Uh, a long time ago, I always said it'd be great to do a documentary on exorcisms, just like the stories, the the prayer and all that good stuff. And it kind of st stumbled onto a priest that had done it. So we kind of traveled through Pennsylvania interviewing these priests that have done exorcisms. Like most of them only did like a handful of them. It's not like a big exorcisms aren't done on a regular basis. No. Let's just say that. And uh, the more we dove into it, like every priest that we talked to kept saying, just be very careful what you're doing it's great what you're doing it it's great that you're doing this film but be very very careful so I'm, I'm like all right cool so the more we did the film the more just bad luck i guess just weird things kept happening everything from stuff in my house um problems with the film like that was the worst film i've ever had to do from point a to point b to get it done and at uh one point i got real sick and was life flighted over a tick bite oh wow uh, yep my buddy Dave lost a finger that year. Uh, his wife, Carrie, got real sick with uh, other health issues. Um, and just the phenomena going on here at my house, like knockings on the walls. The cat, my cat's the laid back, but she was hissing and biting me over just weird stuff. Stuff that she, things that were outside were not outside. Like she was seeing stuff. Uh, it just ongoing. And the more uh, I had talked to a few of the demonologists that took part in it and they a few of them sent me medals, blessed medals, said, put these over your doors and windows. But it just seemed like every step of the way, it was just something 
blocking us from doing the film. Even doing interviews with some of the priests, the audio would cut out. Batteries would drain very fast. Like I went through five batteries in one in one about five minute time frame with the one priest. They just kept draining until he was done with the story, and then they were fine. It, it would just seem like every step of the way there was a problem. <clears throat> well, I I've always lived by a couple of rules with that whole thing: is we don't film them. Right. Rarely do we film them. Um, we don't audio them. <laughs> no. Uh, I have been in, and for folks who don't know, I have been doing the paranormal stuff now since 2010. So I've been at this for 10 years. And after three years, I decided to start dealing with demonology because in 2011, we, uh, this group I had belonged to dealt with our first, we believe was a demonic type of house. And uh, there was stuff going on. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. But um, <laughs> the the freakiest thing, and that you could see how they can portray because you know you're using something called a ghost box. I'm sure you've seen those. Mm -hmm. And we were communicating with something, and then all of a sudden, this other voice came in. And it's you know at first it called us all freaks. Freaks. What the hell is that? <laughs> I'm and a super then, freak. Get it right. <laughs> that's right. So then the next thing, it said goodbye. And then we couldn't get that ghost box to say anything, you know, for the next 10 minutes. So I pick up the recorder, what you're supposed to do. Look at it. Okay, we're recording. Tag the recorder and ta recorder tagging. In case you're out there doing Bigfoot audio, you tag the recorder beginning and end. You say this is such and such date, this is such and such location, and the time now is so and so. Well, you do that at the end. Okay, it's now blah, 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 and the time is now blah, 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 ending the audio. And that's what I did. Shut it off. I go back and I listen to this audio, and it stopped recording after it said goodbye. But yet it was still recording. The rest of it was just blank. How it did that? I have no idea, but they do have this incredible effect on electronics, as you well know. Well, I couldn't even get the film done, like to render out in the computer. Like it was the worst problem. Finally, when it, we, I had to break it up into pieces to get it done. And once I got it up to uh, uh, my associate, Paul Gorman, and I said, it's locked down. We are done. The film is locked and done. All the weird stuff stopped. Like everything stopped. Mm -hmm. it, it was just the weirdest. It, like, Something got off your shoulders. It was just the weirdest feeling. Like this heaviness was gone. Yep. Like, damn it, we tried. <laughs> so we got a bunch of uh, questions and comments. First of all, Charlie Wonton said the Chinese developed Bigfoot in the Wuhan labs. <laughs> 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 that's good. <laughs> uh, that's really good. Um, OTS digital recorder. Yeah, yeah, audio recorder, that is. Mm -hmm. Um. And then we have serious question. Do you guys compare vocal audio you get during expedition to known species uh, using? Uh, no, actually not now. Uh, when the, the audio that, that I had gotten previously was before some of these uh, uh, wildlife identification programs were available. But I am very excited to, you know, in some of my downtime, I'm going to start taking some of our old audio and putting it through that process. But uh, one, I, I remember one audio I got in 2011 is when me and two other researchers decided to walk off and leave just a recorder going into the camp. And you slowly hear this little leaf litter movement, leaf litter, leaf litter. Movement. And then over the recorder, you just hear, uh, and then you hear, Leaf litter, leaf litter, leaf litter, leaf litter, leaf litter. That's it. Done. Pretty freaking uh, creepy. That is and for, creepy. It, well, the other thing, too, is, well, maybe it was a bear. Bears don't growl. So if you're if you're in the woods and you hear something going, it's not a bear. <laughs> it's not a bear. The bears don't growl. They grunt. They they huff. They lip smack, especially when they're they're scared. They start you know, they'll start like they'll start with their jaw. Um, but yeah. Um, that's scary, man. Oh, so yeah. Okay. Uh, 
yes. Uh, saw an episode the other day. I was talking about ex an exorcism. That's very, yeah. Uh, actually, I was. Uh, for those who haven't seen, uh, I was just on the recent episode of Paranormal Survivor, uh, where they actually had uh, the the woman and her husband who were having issues. I was actually the exorcist um, to to kind of deliver their house. So, and I am an ordained minister too. A lot of people don't know that. So, uh, but yeah, uh, very, very interesting uh, topic. Uh, someday we'll we'll get to chat on that stuff, Ryan. Off oh. off a Bigfoot program, and uh, you know, if you're still having issues, let me know. I can give you a, a few pointers. But I, it's just crazy how I said today we're done. It's locked, and, and like yeah. it all stopped. It's just yeah. I, I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, it's quite quite interesting. Yeah. Uh, and you know, people ask me too, why, why I became an exorcist, why I got into demonology. I don't like bullies and, uh, <laughs> that's what they are. They're bullies. They're like, bullies. How, exactly. How can, how can I interrupt your life? Yeah. Uh, I and I, I don't like bullies and, uh, you know, I belong to a group that didn't know how to deal with that. So I broke away eventually and formed my own group, uh, and went forward in, not backing down from stuff like that. Um, and if I can't do it, I'll find somebody that can. Mm -hmm. And it's it, simple as that. So, yeah, a very, very interesting topic for another program, perhaps. Someday we'll have to do, like, just a paranormal program, which Chris hates. Well, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sorry, but I'm skeptical. <laughs> uh, well, you wouldn't be skeptical if you've seen what we've seen happen, what ha we happen. I because, understand. I understand. Yeah. Because what Ryan says is completely correct. If if you get involved in some of these things, all of a sudden, why am I having all this bad luck? Mm -hmm. Why is health failing? Why are things breaking down? Uh, I don't know if you've ever watched uh, the the Demon House by Zach Bagans, mm -hmm. and didn't you see some parallels there that what you were dealing with? And a lot of people said, "Oh, that wasn't very exciting," and you know it was, but that's that's real. <laughs> that's the way things happen. You know, you don't have the head spinning and the, the pea vomit, you the, the split pea soup vomit. Well, um, other things though, I've watched like on the, what was this? Oh, Paranormal hey, hey. Paranormal something. Charlie Wonten says he hears goosebumps. Paranormal society. is a great group. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we have Char Charlie, uh, you might want to get in touch with Jimmy Trick. He's uh, him and his wife Diane are the the heads of that group. Well, yeah, I want to get all of them. Right. But I, I was watching the show with Paranormal Witness. I think that's what it was, and they showed this guy had a film and he's like in a motel somewhere, and uh, you know the the phone comes off the hook or something, and they <laughs> make such a big deal out of it. And I'm like, dude. I could do that with a piece of fishing line. Come on. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There's, there, there is. Uh, <laughs> Ooh. Um, uh, yeah, and there, there is. There, there is a lot of, 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 you know, like films and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but I've seen it. <laughs> I've actually seen stuff like that happen. Uh, I remember uh, one of the neatest places I, I go to, and it's not demonic, and so that's kind of that makes the 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 night kind of fun. Yeah, it's uh, the Shanley Hotel in uh, Napanock, New York, and um, it used to be a home of a brothel and an old time saloon and and good remember, times. Yeah, good times, good times. <laughs> and uh, they they actually videoed uh, a lot of groups had cameras in there and stuff over the years, and they actually got a cat. Uh, like a, a shadow of a, like a, a ghost image of a cat, which was kind of interesting. Hmm. And, um, okay. Um, this is setting up so many jokes. I, I just, I'm, I'm reframing. Yeah, I know. I know. I understand. <laughs> Brothel cat. I, I get it. Yeah. But I, I remember doing a, a session in one of the rooms and the chair in the room behind us, we could hear it slide across the floor. <laughs> We're like, Holy, can you do that again? did it again so after that we got really quiet and after you know a couple hours or more another group was coming in and we were telling them about what had happened in the room to the left of us where the chair had moved and the ladder in the room to the right of us moved 
while we're telling them. We're also here <laughs> over that. And like, what the hell is going on here? But uh, the the, um, the the one cool thing is we we the next night we took groups through for a tour, and you know kind of that's how we pay back something or you do these fundraisers for the for the, the places to keep them going. And I remember I had slept in the one particular bedroom, and it's supposedly one of the haunted bedrooms. Of course, I slept good that night, and nothing happened. And I take the group up there, and, you know, of course, I got like five or six people with me. I'm like, oh, okay, buddy, sit down. Just be quiet for a minute. Uh, okay, can, uh, is anybody with us? Can you show a sign that you're, you're here with us? And right on cue, the bathroom door opened. Could actually hear a doorknob turn. And the door opened. That's very impressive. Can you close it? <laughs> door closed. Nothing the rest of the night, but everybody was standing there with their mouth like wide open, like, <laughs> what did we just say? <laughs> so I was the hit of the night because I actually got you know, open the door and close it in front of everybody. And all the windows were closed and sealed up. So it was like, you know, I had slept in that bedroom and nothing happened that night before. Like, no, at least none that I noticed. I mean, the bathroom door could have opened and closed a thousand times, you know. But it, it was like so, I, and I've seen that. I've seen I've seen you know chairs move a little bit. Uh, you know, the I've heard disembodied voices. Chris, you would. I was in Rolling Hills Sanitarium, and that's not too far from from Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And if you ever get a chance to go, it's a fun place. Um, remember going in the basement of that particular area, and uh, I'm setting up my my digital recorder, and I hear. I, a, uh, I was like, well, and, and you play back the recording and maybe someday I'll play it on the show. Um, but as I'm putting the recorder down, I, I hear this little girl go, Dan, and I'm like, wait, 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 wait. And, and there's other people talking, but there, you could hear them in the recording. You can hear it's definitely like a, a echoed and you, you, and so I go over and did, did somebody just say Dan? Because I just heard a little girl say Dan. And when I stopped, all of a sudden you hear on the mic, Dan. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, oh. And uh, that's true. <laughs> uh, one of the people, I uh, uh, Hinsdale House, New York. Uh, you've heard of that place. Uh, yeah. uh, well, uh, Tack uh, actually has been there a few times with me. <laughs> and it's true. He sees, <laughs> I go up there because I'm a demonologist and there's some things that are not too friendly out there. And uh, it's always an issue with me. If there's something bad, they tend to disappear real quick when I show up. Um, and that's just the way it is. That's why, I la why like if anybody watched Paranormal Survivor I was in, I actually stayed outside with the family while the team went in and did their investigation because I knew if I wouldn't, everything would be quiet. And literally... Uh, the amazing thing is, is that the folks inside the house heard this tremendous boom on the ceiling. The funny thing is, is I was with uh, the husband and wife outside the building. And the husband's really kind of like, I don't know about all this. We all heard it, too, on the outside of the house. Boom. We thought it sounded like a tree hit the house. So the husband and me immediately started going over to the house. What the hell hit the house? Nothing. And you want to talk about um, bad luck? Um, my, I, I, I didn't use my car that evening. Come back, and as we're driving back, there was a tremendous windstorm, and a car, fell, a tree fell on my car. <laughs> so you have oh. those. You see what I mean? Yeah. It's very relevant. Very, all of it is very relevant. You always have this. You know, it's just too much bad luck in a lot of cases to be coincidence. You know, it, it's the same thing with, with the Sasquatch mystery. It's just too much coincidence that people have been seeing the same damn thing, same habits, same methodology for, you know, the last 200 years. Agree. Agree. You know, um, so there's got to be something to it. You know, why haven't we, we found, well, number one, all the infighting and, you know, now social media has just made it worse. Um. Better for some, worse for others. I just don't think people realize how large the forest is. It's huge. The, the, down by us, the Allegheny National Forest yeah. is huge. 
there's I'm sure animals in there that have never seen a human and never will. Yep. They're just so deep in there. You know? Look at the Adirondacks. Huge. Gosh. You go some of those higher peak mountains like uh, in Essex County, Frank, uh, Essex County, Jefferson County, those areas where it's just rolling hills and rolling hills and nothing. Mm-hmm. Like literally there's, you know, uh, you know, I, I used to take trips out doing investigations to like places like Watertown or, or some of the, the northern, like right on the Canadian border type of things. And to get to like Watertown because it's northwest of me, I have to literally drive around the Adirondacks because there's no roads through it. Yeah. It's a drive around this whole mountain range yeah. for miles. Uh, it turns a, if it was a straight line shot, oh yeah, I'd get there in two and a half, three hours. No, it turns it into a four and a half, five hour drive because I have to drive around the Dax. So hmm. yeah, wow. great place though, because you do find dirt roads that do go through the mill room, but they just take forever to go up and down and traverse and hardly anybody goes there. And it's amazing the wildlife you do see when you're on there. <laughs> Bald eagles and moose and all kinds of neat thing. Um, so, anyway, I see the video of a Revolutionary War reenactor, red coat and all, and all three of them were hiding around the wo- woodland. Sometimes it's hard to make out even a guy with a red coat on. I don't know. I I haven't seen that. No, yeah. but I believe it. You know, <clears throat> was that in Gettysburg? Or where where did this occur? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not entirely sure. Well, Revolutionary I, War wouldn't be in Gettysburg. You're correct. It wouldn't know. But uh, the only, you know, the funny thing is Yorktown actually is the only, the only place where there was two a Revolutionary War battle and a Civil War battle fought. Vermont. Vermont. Huh. Hmm. Huh. That must have been. That must be uh, Hubbardin. You know, because that's the only uh, the only place a, a Rev War battle took place in Vermont was in Hubbardton. And that's funny you mentioned that, O.T., because Hubbardton is just a couple of miles down the road from where the Vermont trail cam photo was. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's, it's easy to hide. I mean, in, in Kentucky, the reason I usually don't go out to the woods in the summertime <laughs> because of, well, the ticks and the snakes. But besides that, I mean... Uh, something could be 15 feet away from me in the forest. And all I had to do, all I would have to do is just squat down and it's gone. You know, I can't see it yeah. because so much uh, uh, undergrowth and stuff and small bushes, trees, you just can't see it. Yeah. I mean, as far as the whole portal, you know, the, uh, the portal thing, let, let, let's, you know, I, I've always said this deer cross the road. You take a look to the left. It's gone. You can't see it. It's gone. <clears throat> but so anyway, Ryan. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, so you got a, you got the new uh, a couple of new films on the way. Um, what's your what's your takeaway for the folks that want to watch Mountain Devil Two? What take uh, enjoy it? Just enjoy the story. Enjoy the adventure. I guess through the through the uh, seventy five minutes. It's just I think a lot of people just enjoy the story, which was. Uh, had been sitting around in a book for years. So just, just enjoy it. Like any other film we do, I just, I try our best just to entertain you. And that's my job really. Yep. And it definitely was entertaining. I mean, that <coughs> the, the story, the, the article, the, the pieces from the book you, you drew from were wonderful. Um, sans the cow. <laughs> Besides the cow. <laughs> <laughs> um, just just awesome and oh, thank uh, you. you know uh, uh i don't know well you we we left off all the private parts too which is <laughs> yeah <laughs> don't want to go into detail because yeah, you know. if you do read the, the book there is a particular paragraph drawing. or two on the was there a drawing there was a drawing in one of the editions i i don't have it in my edition i have the third printing you have the fourth printing uh, i know there's a drawing because in lauren's article there's a picture of it i think it was the second, the second it must have been have yeah that. yeah and there's a you know so i just have the little old third edition i actually have a first edition that's signed by john oh very so, nice so i will hold on to that as long as possible yeah that's <laughs> a keepsake man yeah yeah that goes into a case and doesn't get goes on the uh, it takes a centerpiece in the prize collection that's right <laughs> wow <laughs> 
So, well, folks, I think we we got enough show in for tonight, don't you think, Mister Chris? Oh uh, yeah, uh, I think I think everything's been said that we need to say for this week until everybody sees the, the documentary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, I, I know Chris has been Chris has been working on a project and he's pretty pooped. I'm tired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So th thanks, Chris, for hanging in as long as I I wanted to kind of, you know, give you a little bit of a break there towards the end, and uh, we'll get you get us off all cool and then Ryan, if you want to stick around after the credits end, we can still con converse via this way after the show. That's fine, yeah. So, uh, but anyway, folks, uh, next week we're still working on our guest. Hopefully I'll hear from him sometime this week. Um, <laughs> great boy, great job, boys. One time out. <laughs> thank you, Charlie. And OT, thank you, sir. <coughs> yeah, whatever I had was very was very brief. Lasted a few hours and was gone. Never came back. So, um, but anyway, uh, so next week, uh, we still have a. a we still have the mystery guest going to the couch a week after that, eight on uh, August 30th. We're going to have Haskell V. Hart. Ryan, where can people find your videos? If they would like a DVD, a physical copy, they can get that from our website, which is www.legendhunterfilms.com. If you want to rent it or download it, you can, well, you can grab that on Amazon or Vimeo. And if you want updates on what we're doing or keep uh, in the loop of things, uh, just join uh, Legend Hunter Films on Facebook and you can see all our adventures. And as always, thanks for coming on, Ryan. Thank you very honor. much for having me. It was a pleasure. my honor to have you, though. No, no, thank you. I appreciate <laughs> no, no. it. No, no, thank you. No, 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 thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Mr. That's Bennett. fun. Say your spill. Uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight, especially you, Ryan. Appreciate it, oh, buddy. Thank, thank and you, uh, all all our great listeners we have, that, and, and and all the action you guys had in the chat. Thank you. We appreciate it. We'll see you next time. That's right. Okay, folks, we'll catch you all next week. On behalf of all of us here, God bless. Have a great week. Stay healthy. And all, most of all, keep on squatching. Folks, you've been watching Squatch TV. Join us Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for the latest on the Bigfoot mystery. As always, we thank you for being our loyal viewers and encourage all to subscribe to our YouTube page at youtube.com slash Steve Culls. As always, have a great week. Stay safe. God bless. And keep on squatching.